Pisces friends and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020. We're Pisces this month. We have got three moons happening. Venus is going to change signs twice. Mercury is going to retrograde, then slide into another sign. Pluto comes direct and it is just a month for you Pisces where the daytime chart daytime part of your chart is really alive and really well. So a focus on career, a focus on putting yourself out there, a focus very much so on being seen is a little bit of a theme I think that's happening this month. As well, as we get to the second half of the month, I keep thinking declutter, reinvigorate, um, reinvent, but you're doing it in public. So I'll get to all of that, okay? All right, Pisces, this month, the Eat and Greets coming along. Jessica Lanyato, Basil Farrington, Giulio Pellegrini, Natai will be here, Shakira Tabor, and Shane M. Nygaard. It is a loaded time of interviews this month. And now, if you would like to see the Eat and Greets in that replay, ad free. Come and join me on Patreon for $5 a month. You can see all of the eat and greets ad free. Absolutely brilliant solution to the challenge we've been having with all of the ads over here on YouTube. Now, if you do still want to just stay here on YouTube, you absolutely can. The videos aren't going anywhere. You can also hear the interviews on the podcast. Just know that there will be ads in both of those places. Patreon is ad free, okay? As well, this month on the 3rd and the 4th of October, I'll be field tripping over to Astrology University for the Summit of Astrology and World Events. And it is free. I would love to have you be there. Speakers, panels, all of that good stuff. Come jump in, come learn, just spend a weekend learning. And if you'd like to get the recordings because you can't be there, but you want to hear them later, then you can grab the all access pass. Okay. But either way, come over, come learn, come study, come enjoy. We'd love to hear your feedback about what's going on in the astrology as well. Okay. All right, Pisces, let's get on in here and see what the month has got going on. Right at the beginning of the month on the 1st, we've got a full moon happening at 9 degrees of Aries, which lights up your second house space. Now, the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. A shift is trying to be created here. Now, the ruling planet of this moon, Mars, is still retrograde. So it gives me this sense or this idea that in your finances, um, not even just finances, in the things that you consider to be valuable, even in the way that you make money. I just, I, I feel like there's a little confusion around money in some way right now, or there's some confusion about what's the value of something. So what I'll tell you is that for this full moon, Aries becomes this solution warrior, right? You're looking for the solutions that are the right fit. But instead of taking all of the action to get that sorted out this month, what happens is this full moon with a Mars retrograde is giving you the opportunity to pause and get a strategy in order. It's like, Pisces, let's look, look, let's look over this area. How are we making money? What are we doing with our money? Do we have money put away in savings? What are we doing with our possessions? What are we doing with us with our self-esteem, right? Are we just letting anybody treat us any old kind of way? Are we treating people any old kind of way? So whatever it is, this is an energy and a moon, I think that is more about strategy than full forward action, okay? On the second, we see Venus move into the energy of Virgo. So going right across the street into that seventh house space. Venus moving into your seventh house is so wonderful for relationships. It really is. It magnetizes them. It brings some harmony. It brings some diplomacy, whether this is romantic relationships, business relationships, the relationship of you with you. I mean, I can imagine Pisces this year. How has it been in relationships for you? Could you use a little magnetism in this particular area as well? Venus here has the potential to use Virgo in such a way that says, okay, in my relationships, where do I not need to be nitpicky, but where do I need to look at what's the priority? What's going well here, right? At a low level, Venus and Virgo can really nitpick these relationships apart. Now, if you do need to get into the pattern of things that have been happening in your relationship, Venus and Virgo is, is your lady, okay? On the fourth, we see Pluto coming direct and out of retrograde in your 11th house. This has been changing and shaping and transforming your friendship groups, your alignments with either in your own, um, <clears throat> your own long range plans and goals and designs and aspirations for yourself. I feel like a lot of this has been reformed as 2020 has gone on and you've been changed. What do you want for yourself now? And who's the tribe that you want to travel with you? It is okay to 
um, you know, have your deepest desires, which Pluto was tapping into in this area of your life, ready to express itself and move forward with that whole Capricorn Council now out of retrograde. On the 13th, we see Mercury being in the energy of Scorpio, but now taking its retrograde at 12 degrees of Scorpio, lighting up your ninth house space. So publishing, marketing, broadcasting, faith. I even think just the word, the full word expansion applies for you here because you've got so much going on in the daytime, very visible portion of your chart that I just think to myself as Mercury's retrograding here, are you going back over how you are seen? Are you going back over your ability to expand? This could be as simple as truly though, marketing, publishing, broadcasting, putting that stuff out there and you're getting back into the details of how that actually works, making sure that there is some depth to what you're saying, to what you have to put out there um, and then you're putting it out there. Now Mercury also here would be acting as it would influence your career as well. So this could be some career travel that you've got going on at this particular time as well. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Libra at 24 degrees, lighting up your eighth house space. So you're planting your seeds of intention here. But I think this new moon in terms of balance and the eighth house also speaks to me of this energy of needing to detox. Detox, declutter, get rid of the things that do not allow Pisces to be independent and float as free as your energies would like to be able to. But also <clears throat> in a partnership, in a collaboration, in something you need to get done in a joint resource, this is a wonderful moon to plant your seeds of intention to bring an appropriate relationship um, or an appropriate balance into your life. So plant your seeds of intention and let's see what blossoms out for you over this next four weeks. And yes, this could definitely be you could be getting married. This is certainly an energy where you could be making a commitment to get married. On the 22nd, we see the sun moving into the energy of Scorpio, now lighting up that ninth house, that ninth house where we have seen this Mercury retrograde working already, but the sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality. So now you are motivated for this expansion. You are motivated for this connection, this commitment, whatever is happening in this particular area. And the retrograde Mercury is going to get out of there in a minute. So the sun is just going to be beaming and shining really bright in your expansion area. So if you are you know, a college student or something like that. This is actually quite helpful for you in terms of your classes. I think if you're like an underclassman or you're you're not quite to college, you're in high school, this will also give you like, like a, a leg up a little bit. Whereas before the 22nd of the month, you might've been struggling a little bit if you were some of our, our younger students, okay? On the 24th, I want to throw this date out to you because I think it's just such a useful date. Venus is going to trine Saturn. Venus is in Virgo. Saturn is over in Capricorn. So we've got an Earth trine happening here. This is a great day to make a commitment that will stick, that's long lasting, right? It's a significant um, long-lasting commitment that can be made on this day. So if you, you need to make some commitments between, you know, that seventh house energy and that 11th house energy, this is a great day to see what conversations happening there and go on ahead and make that commitment. On the 27th, we see that Mercury retrograde sliding back now into the energy of Libra. So you are now going to be back here and looking over these joint connections again. But in the retrograde energy, it's saying, am I in the correct relationship Am I just in the correct relationship? I think that's one of the questions, right? But I also think, uh, am, I, am I interdependent in my relationships as opposed to anything that is creeping over from being dominated to being codependent? Am I interdependent, which allows for my own independence here because that's the kind of thing that's gonna keep balance. If not, what you may see as Mercury's retrograde, that the balance of your relationships or your joint connections is tipped. This is also a great energy for detoxing. Pay down those loans, pay off that debt, clean out the house, get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong there anymore because it's likely tipping you out of balance, okay? As we close out this month, we're going to have a full moon happening in the energy of Taurus right there conjunct Uranus. So this is a full moon in the third house that is going to bring a surprise. So I have no doubt like a surprise conversation, a surprise communication, maybe a surprise interview is granted to you in some way or you're speaking unexpectedly in some way, shape, or form. Either way, the full moon is still asking us to end, acknowledge, or make an adjustment to something we've been thinking. Maybe a sibling. Oh, this could be, um, this is an idea of faith for you, Pisces, it looks like, from what I'm being shown, like maybe 
maybe you're you you've been trying to do something the same way for a while and you're seeing that it's not working out so this energy here is actually it's like changing your mind it's surprisingly like it gives you a moment it's like a zap and it changes your mind about something that's been going on and now you can take a look at it with some fresh eyes so whatever it is that full moon is definitely going to surprise us just a little bit with that uranian energy being over there for sure and it would be a surprise in a little bit of your foundation and your structures or the areas where you've been stuck or been doing something the same way for quite some time. And this could even be because Uranus is still retrograde. You have a conversation with someone who is in your life in the past, or you're readdressing your thinking about something from the past. So I'll be interested to hear what that is for you, Pisces. So please let me know, should you feel comfortable to do so, in the comment section down below. It's going to be a good month, Pisces. It's a usable month, but there is a lot going on here that asks you to look at your strategy and not to forget to shine. You are in public. You've got a daytime energy happening right now, so use it to move in a very daytime way for yourself, okay, and eliminate the things that don't allow you to fly in the way that you would like to. All right, Pisces, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton, and I will see you next month. Bye.